Welcome um, to our talk. Um, it's called Honey Monkeys um, Chasing Hackers uh, with a Bunch of Monkeys. And um, yeah, my name is Sebastian Wolfgarten, and uh, this is Christian Piller. Um, we run a website called uh, devtarget.org. Uh, there is not much content yet uh, because we are in the process of redesigning everything. Um, but I hope you en enjoy this talk, and uh, uh, all the material is going to be available on our website as well. Okay, um, so we have thought about the following agenda. First of all, we, uh, we're going to uh, uh, introduce ourselves. We're going to talk about traditional honeypots. Uh, then we're going to talk about honey uh, clients, uh, also known as honey monkeys. And um, later on, I'm going to, uh, or Christian is going to actually show you some uh, case studies before we go on uh, into forensics and uh, finally sum it up. Okay, so yeah, uh, maybe Christian can, um, yeah, all right. Okay, that's me. I'm Christian Piller. I'm working as an IT security expert at the European Central Bank at the moment. Uh, I'm a former Ersenyang employee. This is important because we met uh, Sebastian at Ersenyang. We were colleagues there, and that's how our work to, uh, together started. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. As I said, my name is Sebastian Wolfgart, and I'm currently studying um, security and forensic computing uh, in Dublin. Uh, before that, I graduated in, um, in the University of Stuttgart. And um, here yeah, I'm with Ernst Young for a couple of years now, and uh, I usually work as a reviewer and author for uh, Edison Wesley and Variety and various other uh, magazines. Yeah, so we go on to now the interesting stuff. Okay, so first of all, what is a what is a honeypot? Um, maybe we can make a little poll. So um, maybe raise your hand if you don't know what a honeypot actually is. Okay, so okay, four people. So that's grand. Um, no, actually, a honeypot is just a system that's there for the purpose of being uh, exploited, uh, attacks, uh, attacked, um, exploited, and obviously compromised. Okay, so the thing is, um, um, what would a typical installation of a honeypot in a, in a corporate environment uh, would look like? That's probably it. You can have honeypots basically in every part of your network. You can have it in your uh, in your LAN. You can have it in your in your normal uh, uh, client area. You can have it in, in your DMZ. You can have it everywhere. You can have it even in databases. So, um, but this time we're not going to talk about honeypots. We're going to talk about a quite new um, concept, which is called honey clients. So, what is a honey client? Uh, a honey client is basically um, instead of just installing a system which is meant to be uh, scanned, attacked, and compromised. You actively go out, you take a client, uh, let, this, uh, let the client send requests to the web and basically uh, surf through websites and then you analyze what, that, what those websites did to your client, okay? So what you want to do is you want to find out uh, whether a certain uh, website is actually malicious or not. That's actually the purpose. So you want to find, uh, for instance, if you, if you, do, you probably have heard about uh, um, the problem that exists currently with Windows Metafiles. I think it came out yesterday or the, maybe the day before. If you go to fsecure.com slash weblog, you can read uh, uh, every detail about it. Basically, it's a, it's a, it's a zero day for Windows, and there's no patch at all. And uh, people found out about it um, um, because they visited basically a malicious website that, that was just because you, you, you visited the website, uh, your system got uh, infected there immediately with the zero day. Okay, and, and for those purposes, a honey client is actually perfect because a honey, a honey client will actually take a list and we've implemented a software which would do that for you and would visit those websites and analyze what those websites did to your host, okay? So the, instead of being a rather passive, uh, yeah, ra rather passive, you're actually actively exploring the web for certain vulnerabilities, okay? Okay, so um, yeah, as I said, you, you take a list of, of uh, URLs and uh, you, you uh, visit them one by one, 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 by one and uh, do a comparison of what happened to your host uh, uh, b before you, you actually visit the, uh, the site and afterwards, okay? Okay, so a little bit of history. Actually, uh, we're not quite sure where the thing actually comes from. The idea was probably invented by Lance Spitzner, who is kind of the god of, of honeypots. A very interesting book he, he wrote about honeypots, which is actually called Honeypot, so it, you should quite read it. Uh, I think the real breakthrough was done by people from Microsoft whose names I really can't pronounce. Um, th those people actually did their Honey Monkey, monkey project. And um, yeah, they actually, they, they claimed that they actually found a zero day just after a couple of weeks or a month they deployed the thing. But it's not 100% certain because the thing has been around before and uh, but they, think they are still claimed that the thing is actually um, uh, not, it's not, uh, was not found by Microsoft. And uh, yeah, maybe one little story bef uh, before we go on. We asked Microsoft to forward us uh, a list of 
of URLs. They have, as I said, 800 URLs, which are actually malicious. And we asked them very nicely and several times to provide us with material. And uh, they always said to us simply to fuck off. And uh, that's why we put the following slide in there, j just to thank them, basically. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and uh, yeah. So that's our thanks for them for not sharing the material with us, OK? Um, yeah, so we come to our keep it simple and stupid implementation of a, of a honey climb, which we Kristen actually present. OK, so I don't know if you, or please uh, raise the hand who did not read that honey monkey white paper from Microsoft. OK, that's the majority of the people. So in that, uh, in that white paper, Microsoft describes um, a quite sophisticated system of a, of, of a Honey client. What they did, they had several virtual uh, environments linked to each other. So for example, firstly, uh, a virtual environment containing a Windows XP without any patches and service packs, go to the website and check uh, if it's malicious or not. And then the same was done by uh, service pack one and the same was done by the service pack two. So in this way, they could actually determine uh, the exploit uh, used, is it new or not? So if, if, um, if they found out that the latest uh, patch level is also gets compromised by the site, then it's a zero day. So what they did, so they changed, changed those environments. Actually, um, we did not have the time for it because we are working and uh, you see this, is, this uh, thing is quite new, so what we did, is actually a really stupid and simple um, virtual environment uh, containing a Windows XP Service Pack 2. However, our environment and our tool is not bounded to Microsoft, so you can use the same tool because it's written in Perl, um, also in, in Linux environments um, to find uh, exploits in Mozilla and so ever. But of course, we wanted to go f uh, er first to, to find out um, How's it working? And to see, and with Windows you have better chances, of course, than uh, than with Linux. So our script is pretty uh, straightforward, and therefore I did, we did not release it because it's so straightforward that uh, I'm a little bit shaming of myself that it's so straight, straightforward. Is but uh, can you please? So it's actually nothing else. It's a it's a it's a, a VMware, a non-persistent <laughs> image of a VMware Windows XP Service Pack 2. Um, it, when it starts, it, uh, and per skip gets automated, uh, automatically started, which is actually go for a network location, where in the file, the target URL is written, so he reads that from there. Um, he makes an image of the, of, the, of the system from the registry and from the file system, uh, gets the URL, uh, starts the browser with that URL, waits a little bit, and then, um, he makes another image of the system and compares it. And of course, if, he f if, the, uh, if the image before and after is not the same, then we have, uh, we have found something. Also part of the tool is the script outside, uh, which is uh, actually it's a virtual, uh, visual basic script, which is, does nothing else just to look at that uh, network location and uh, if the results are, are appear in that network location because the per script writes Price the results back to the to the um, to that share. Then he changed the URL in the in the file, so the next next uh, URLs will be will be uh, executed. Okay, and uh, the, so the typical result of this of this tool will look like this. This is um, this is for example the registry changes. You see that uh, for example that the logon time that one registry entity disappeared and the new registry entity gets in. And uh, for the for the other ones, they are new entries. So what you see is probably probably a, a, a service and the driver got installed. The same is true for the uh, Sebastian, please. For the file system, you see, uh, with, um, for example, here we have a, a help file somehow uh, appeared on the on our network uh, on our local drive. Uh, you you see the HDM file, which is actually the the site itself, what you visited. And of course, those text files are, uh, are just uh, temporary files for the, for the tool who is working on it. Okay, how did we test it? Of course, because the tool is 
is actually not the value. The value or how you can find uh, malicious websites is of course the point where are you starting from. If you just start uh, to browse the net, you will probably find a malicious website with a very low chance. Uh, but if you, if you are starting from a, from a site, from a malicious site, then of course all links from that malicious sites have a, ha, has a chance being malicious much, much higher than this. Um, so what we did, actually we did two different runs. Uh, we traveled links and structures uh, starting from a porn site because we were assuming that porn sites uh, are malicious with a, with a high chance and uh, we did the same with the Vores site. Um, okay, we extracted a large number of links, but of course, since this, uh, the checking of, of, the, of, the, of the sites are taking time, what we don't uh, have, <laughs> because we have to work, unfortunately, um, we analyzed only 2,000 of them, which is already 22 hours of, of pure runtime. Um, and, um, and of course the time additionally required for the analysis. So there is a question uh, for a little surprise that what do you think the percentage what we found malicious? So th I have heard here 20%. Anybody else? You said one? 0.1. Hmm? 0.1. Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, so the surprise is actually that uh, we have no surprise. Sorry for that, because we were asked. We did last year, and we were asked this year not to do it. Uh, I don't know. So uh, sorry about that. Uh, we prepared the slides before that, but um, uh, it's because we were on the on the the the, the good news is the porn sites are harmless. <laughs> <laughs> So this is probably because uh, they, they will lose clients if they would, uh, would infect them. Um, for the, for the virus-related sites, it's depending really on where you start, but one, two percent uh, were, were malicious. Uh, of course, the maliciousness is, is can, be, can be in uh, uh, several different nature, and we will talk about this one later. Um, okay, this is, um, I already talked about that one, that this is how we, how we started. We, we selected the links just by entering the, in the Google URLs and pick up a, a random site and we started from there. Um, and we only found uh, Internet Explorer uh, exploits in this time, but uh, since we were looking, we were browsing with an Internet Explorer, uh, yeah, this doesn't mean a lot. Uh, we will try and in the future uh, try with, uh, with Mozilla as well. Okay. Okay, and I give back to Sebastian. Okay. Yeah, so um, yeah, there's actually many things for us left to be done and uh, maybe people in the audience get attracted by the idea of, uh, of Honey Clients and, and uh, maybe you want to join us. Um, what we have to do is, first of all, we have to find more, de more websites that are actually uh, malicious and especially those websites that will attempt to exploit your your system uh, uh, if you're on a Windows system but also if you're on any other operating system let's say Linux I think we're gonna see this next year um, probably because last year we said for instance here at the CCC that uh, malicious software will at some stage try to detect VMware and uh, will try to behave differently when it's running inside VMware from just preventing you from analyzing it and uh, later on, we're going to have some um, case studies where you can actually see that the software behaves differently if you run it inside VMware. So um, I think uh, this is going to um, be the same, um, and we're going to see some exploits targeting both Windows and Linux users next year, probably. Additionally, we need to build a database of, of websites that are actually malicious. This is actually a big problem because no, nobody that has done research so far uh, uh, tends to share their results with us. And uh, so again, another call for the community to actually uh, build a website that would, uh, that would contain malicious websites or links to malicious websites and maybe even anal uh, um, um, 
analysis of those websites so um, people can go to the website and inform them themselves about about the way a certain website maybe was compromised and then uh, um, about uh, the way it actually uh, exploited its uh, visitors. Okay, the next thing we need to do is um, we need actually more intelligent and clever ways to find malicious websites. Currently, it's just a, it's a, it's a little bit of, of guesswork and it's a lot of Googling and uh, uh, it's, not very, it's not very effective really because uh, what we did is we Googled for it. We uh, used a website that contained typos like uh, F secure instead of uh, F secure, so a, a K instead of a C, for instance. And uh, it, those things are actually very, very, uh, very, very dumb and not very intelligent. So we have to find ways. Let's say um, a pub, uh, an exploit is published on Chaotic, uh, let's say on Monday, and how long does it take for the exploit to spread around several websites? and to exploit actually people. So if we could find a way to actually determine this, uh, this, this uh, time, to the time uh, difference, then this would be very helpful. Then obviously a zero day is also very valuable if you would be able to find this. So far we did not succeed, but I mean, we just started this a couple of months ago, so maybe we will uh, succeed someday. Then another problem we have is that because we, what we do is our software, or what we, our software does is basically, okay, you compare your system before you actually go to the website and afterwards. It's very simple, it's not nothing special. It's a, a little bit, very, very little bit uh, 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 comparable to, to actually an IDS, uh, a host-based IDS, although it's not very intelligent, as I said. Uh, so we need more intelligent ways to actually uh, uh, to actually tell whether a website has exploited your system or not. So we need to determine uh, did it do any kind of memory-based uh, uh, modifications of the system. For instance, if you think of rootkits that would uh, that would on Linux, for instance, on Windows, it's pretty much the same. It could hook a, a system call, and we wouldn't be able to to determine this because we simply don't look for those stuff. Okay, so we need to find a way to actually uh, uh, to analyze uh, um, the memory of a running system. Obviously, there are forensic tools for this, uh, but our tool is it's just an automated Perl script, basically, and uh, it, it's not capable of doing this stuff so far. But I mean, this is stuff which has to be done in the future, so we see where we're up to. Okay, then the next thing is, as Christian described, Microsoft has set up like a like a chain or a loop of honey of honey clients, basically. So the first system goes to one website, it is exploited. Okay, then the second system with a different uh, software installation goes to that site as well, and they compare whether they both are exploited. So it, then you know, okay, let's say Windows XP with Service Pack One and this and this version of Internet Explorer is exploited, but maybe with this and this update it is not. So you can directly determine uh, um, um, the, the, the software configuration a certain uh, website is targeting, okay? So what we need to do, we need to do the same. We need to set up a, 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 a kind of coordinated and chained way of, of having honey uh, client installations. Then obviously what we need to do as well, although this is actually quite easy, um, we need to uh, obfuscate the use of VMware. Because we use VMware because it's a, it's a good piece of software in my opinion, and it's uh, pretty convenient. And uh, as I said, some of the malicious websites, as we predicted last year, they actually try to determine is, uh, am I being visited by a user that uh, actually runs Internet Explorer or Windows in a VMware system, okay? So whenever this happens, maybe, okay, so if you want to go to malicious websites, maybe you or if you want to take a look at gray porn, then maybe use VMware to surf because uh, you're not gonna be exploited because the things are detecting you using VMware and the malicious code is not run. Well, maybe this is, uh, maybe this is a, a feasible way, although I don't think that uh, 16 colors are that nice uh, inside a VMware box, so you maybe want to have the full picture of whatever you look at. Um, so we need to do, we, need, we, we may need to do a lot of uh, work there. And uh, yeah, if you want to join us, our website is devtarget.org, as said. Okay, so um, yeah, we come to another implementation with, which is actually quite interesting. Um, it has been done by, by a girl called Katie Wang. Um, she uh, presented already uh, her idea at um, presentations or conferences such as uh, TorCon, for instance. And uh, she has written a software which is actually quite similar. It's probably better, but never mind. As our software, um, it's honeyclient.org. And she's written a Perl script that basically, it includes a proxy and it will, be, it will be sitting in between your browser and the target web server, okay? So it will analyze all the data that is flowing between yourself and uh, the target website. And it will store all the links and all the data and uh, keep it there for later analysis, okay? So it's, it's pretty, pretty uh, straightforward as well and it's pretty intelligent. Uh, well, it's simple, but it's also an intelligent way of doing this thing. Okay, so let's go. 
sorry, I forgot something, um, because I want to mention this because I'm also studying at TCU at the Dublin City University, and uh, by the way, if people are interested in, in, in graduating in IT security, they have a very, very interesting uh, um, program which I'm currently undertaking, so if you're interested, you can contact me uh, some stage. But never mind, the people uh, that study at actually at DCU last year, they wrote an extension to um, HoneyClient, which will actually, uh, what it does, it, it uh, actually analyzes spam messages and it extracts all the URLs from the, those spam messages and goes on and um, goes on and uh, visits every single URL that has been included in those spam messages. And so, what you can do with this is basically you can find the correlation between spam and malicious websites. Okay, so you can try to figure out uh, uh, what percentage of uh, what percentage of, of uh, websites or, or people that actually uh, produce spam are also malicious. I mean, they might be malicious in their own nature, but uh, I mean, malicious in the way that they actually target users, okay? Okay, so we come to our case studies. We have two nice case studies, and uh, the first one is actually uh, a warning. <laughs> okay, this is about private investigation, so we want you to get some, uh, get yourself your own system, set it up in VMware, whatever you want to use. Uh, QEMO is, is, is nice as well. Um, so ba basically, go to those websites mentioned here, but beware that you will be infected with spyware and all other sorts of malicious software. But I mean, this is about private investigation. This is a CCC Congress, so come get some and uh, get infected because I mean, that's, a, it's a, that, that's what the fun is all about, okay? So uh, the nice website here. <laughs> uh, uh, okay, this is not for you to see, okay? Okay, so um, a very nice website is actually um, cracks.am and um, uh, yeah, cracks. That I am is basically websites, you know, where you can get, oh, I have those, this Uber music tool and I want to use it now, so I need a crack now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so I go to, uh, go to astalavista.box.sk or whatever the thing is called and I type in whatever tool I want to use, Half-Life 2 crack or whatever, and uh, one site I'm gonna find is, is cracks.im, for instance. And um, but besides those uh, kind of nice, um, uh, pop-ups, you will also get some uh, sorts of cracks and other tools. So, uh, for another small surprise, uh, maybe you can find the first failure in the picture, or the first interesting thing at the picture, except the two ladies. <laughs> yeah, what's unusual about this picture, maybe? Uh, black box, Yeah, <laughs> okay, beside this black box, and anything in between here, and here, and maybe here, and yeah. It's not, it's not fine sex, sex partners in Frankfurt, okay? So, <laughs> so okay, now, well, it's not, maybe not that obvious. But the thing is, you, you can only see one task running, although the thing has opened up uh, several, uh, several pop-ups. So this is, this is different to what a normal Windows system would usually, do, would usually do, because you would see, for every pop-up that you have, you would see a, 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 um, a, sev um, a certain window running. So this is different from the normal uh, Windows behavior, okay? Yeah, so in pop-up blocker are not gonna work uh, on this website, I think. Okay, so we go on and uh, this stuff is actually created by a very nice uh, um, um, website. It's called yoursitebar.com your, um, and uh, well, they really help you to, uh, to surf in a different way because they infect you with malware. So uh, they really want you to surf in a different way, well, malicious in a kind of. So if you take a look at, at uh, their text, it's actually, well, you can read it yourself, but it's just, it's, it's a joke, basically, because what those guys do, they infect you with mal malware and other stuff, and they say, well, look, we can give you, as the user, the best way you can experience the web, because we have all the tools to give you powerful stuff, and, uh, well, basically, they backdoor your system or install spyware, so uh, it's not really a very uh, nice way to do it. Uh, sorry, if you wouldn't understand what's happening, we had to had to uh, cut a little bit of the of the, the detailed analysis. So therefore, if you find that some parts are missing, they are missing. But you will find them in the in the full and uh, full uncutted version. What we will what we will show you. So what, actually, what here happened, the site uses an exploit to install an adware, and uh, this is the provider of the adware. Yeah, I mean, that's true. I uh, almost forgot about it. We have the full presentation on the website because we ha really had to cut our parts because it just was way too long. So as Christian correctly said, you go on the website and without you really noticing, you will be installed with a nice shiny 
xxxtoolbar.com thing, okay? And the people that produce uh, xxxtoolbar.com or the nice shiny uh, toolbar are actually those guys. So, uh, and, th and inside the software they have several references to this website. And um, what also what they also have is they have, um, they actually detect is VMware running or is it not? So if, if VMware is running, then basically the software will, the malicious uh, part of the software will not be executed. So this prevents people from actually, uh, from actually uh, analyzing the stuff inside VMware. So what we, our approach for instance that we take, as uh, Christian said, we have a, a, a non-persistent VMware image, we run the thing, we, um, uh, we analyze it afterwards, and here on this we website, it was the first website that uh, actually prevented, up, prevented us from using this way because simply uh, it is not malicious whenever you use VMware. Okay, it, it's very easy to certain when their detection because you can simply deinstall the VMware tools and then the thing will, will work again. But uh, I mean, there are more interesting ways and we uh, talked about them last year, how you can detect v uh, VMware, so I think uh, the tools will get more intelligent and then maybe in, uh, analyzing the stuff in VMware is not possible anymore. We will see wh what happens next year. Okay, then there are actually some very nice uh, registry calls that the thing ma uh, makes because what it does basically, you know there are m several uh, spyware companies around and what this thing does is actually it, it tries to detect what other kind of malware or spyware you have installed on your system and uh, so it detects, for instance, let's say, you're already infected with, let's say, uh, search assistant. So um, it knows actually that the software is there and it can handle it automatically. So it might disable the other one and uh, uh, just, um, just in order to be the only one, okay? Okay, I think now we come to our uh, is summary. The thing is basically, uh, Cracks.im is just all about the money, basically. It's not, it's not really, it, well, it is malicious in the way that it, it installs uh, uh, spyware on your system. But then again, by using the toolbar, it's all about uh, getting money for the people that actually, that actually run the website, okay? So it's not about, it's not really about uh, backdooring your system or in our second example, we have a, uh, an example of a botnet, for instance. Um, it, it's not about uh, malicious, it's not that malicious, it's just about the money. It uses a quite old Internet Explorer bug and it's, it's, it's mostly targeting users that want to have a, a, a crack for a certain piece of software so, uh, well, they want, they want to be probably, they want to be uh, lead wannabe users, whatever they want to be, and they try to, to, to download stuff and they actually get infected. So, they kind of uh, um, deserve what they get, I, I guess. So, you should have like up to date uh, browsers or software, and then you could prevent yourself from being uh, attacked. Okay, so we come now to our second example. Okay, this, our second example is uh, actually molecularmultimedia.com. Uh, this is how the site looked like if, if, yeah, on a sunny day. Nothing special. But on a not so sunny day, you might see that uh, Windows help is opening. JavaScript errors. Mm, something saying like, you dropped something on the taskbar and want to close themselves. So what's, what the heck is going on here? Um, uh, so a variety of, of unusual things were happening. And um, if, uh, if we, when we analyzed the site with our tool, uh, we found out that actually there is four, um, four new uh, files were created, and of course some new registry entries. Actually, you, the the tool outputs you see in when we did when we introduced our tool, uh, that was that was this site or part of part of the results for this site, um, which was interesting. That after looking at uh, all those four files, three of them were, were identical, uh, and then of course you you might you might start to think, why do you have three, uh, th three times the same file? And you might think that, that this is a shotgun approach. So the site probably has three different exploits and uh, hopes that one of them uh, and can get to the user. Okay, so uh, can, you, can you please open the code? We have, we have um, the code of the site. And if you, if you look at it, you will find, 
uh, I hope that Sebastian found it. So you will find out uh, very easily that the, the code has also three parts. Uh, can, you, can you make it? Yeah, three parts, and uh, this is very interesting and uh, uh, very, I think it's, it's quite professional. So in the first part, can you just put the whole screen? There was a, no? Okay, so in the first, first um, part, you will see that uh, some kind of ActiveX things are happening. Uh, you, you see here that the cuff exec gets downloaded and, uh, and it's written, written to somewhere. Um, this is actually uh, an uh, exploit for an, for an ActiveX, uh, for an ActiveX uh, vulnerability. Okay, you, you will find out that you have uh, almost the same exploit code twice in, this, in the page. Uh, there was the first one and Sebastian just marking the second one. So this, this is the first, first uh, part of the, of the code. And then if you are, we are going down, you will find something like, Sebastian, can you please go down? Something like very strange, strange things happening here. <laughs> okay, we will talk about uh, this one, what's, what's, what the heck is it? And uh, this is the second part. And the, the, the third part, of course, you, uh, and the third part is you see that it is some kind of, some kind of a Unicode encoded stuff. Uh, so these are, the, these are the three major parts in the code, and uh, you guess probably by right now that this is the three exploit that the site containing. And uh, this Unicode you can, you can decrypt easily, and what you will f uh, found out that this is actually a delivery method uh, for, the, for, the, for the encrypted code in the middle. And the encrypted code in the middle is the third exploit. Okay. So this is the, the three exploit. And of course this is very much uh, in line what you have seen. Uh, when you when you browse the site, so the first one is the ADO, ADODB uh, stream object vulnerability. The next one is the help activist control vulnerability, and uh, the the last is the drag and drop uh, vulnerability. Okay, so as you have seen, uh, the three three five are identical, and uh, the the fourth one, the x.chm, was a Windows help file. And uh, the Windows help file is actually doing nothing else, uh, just delivering, delivering the same files. So a cov, cov exe and cov one cov exe was delivered by, uh, by the, uh, the ADODB vulnerability. The x.chm was delivered by, by the drag and drop and uh, and the x.chm delivered the money exe, which was the force file through the, through the uh, ActiveX control vulnerability. So okay, so because all the three uh, malicious code was the same is, uh, is enough for us just to analyze one of them. And um, you are already seeing that, uh, for example, this proxy engine, <laughs> it gets malicious, I think. And, uh, of course, you are seeing here that he adds himself to the to the Windows firewall um, policy that he can access the internet. You see that it starts as new service, and those things, if you if you look for them, they are mostly belonging to to some kind of uh, virus scanner, um, or Norton antivirus, or Symantec antivirus, or or something like that. They are processes for those. Okay. Sebastian? Okay, and if you, if you execute uh, this code in a sandbox, you will see that, uh, yeah, this is really what that's happening, what we guessed by now from the, from the register entries, from the strings what we found, and from the, from the results, our tool. So you see that it's, it's, uh, if you start the malicious code, it creates two files, 
he, uh, he creates a new service and uh, makes some settings in the registry for the service and delivers also a driver. And uh, by this, he is opening a, a proxy on your server, which is uh, most likely controlled by, by a botnet. So if you, if you are visiting that site uh, with your Windows XP service pack 2, then you are now, by now, part of a botnet. Okay, so the summary, this, this site was not like the other one, uh, because this is uh, more professional. This is, um, the author remains anonymous because the, the, the malicious code was, uh, was uh, on a hacked page, so delivered by a hack page, on, uh, to users who were, who were actually not looking for, for trouble than in the other case. Um, yeah, and of course, it's not for money, or not for money directly, it's creation of a botnet. And of course, probably the, the, the owner of the botnet will send or will sell his botnet for, for money. But if you, if you look, look, at, look at the code, we, we don't do it now, but uh, the, the, the author is so, um, I don't know the real word, but <laughs> he's also accessing some, some counters uh, so he makes some hits, some counters in Russia. So you will, he's probably f from Russia. Okay, and back to Sebastian. Okay, so yeah, we wanted to show, uh, we wanted to reverse engineer the file, but uh, yeah, we already uh, 45 minutes through the talk almost, so uh, we said we couldn't really make it, but um, uh, maybe one last part of the presentation is the forensics, and it's really in a nutshell, because last year we, we spoke, uh, I think more uh, more than an hour about uh, forensics, and I think you can probably spend weeks talking about it. Um, but because this is uh, this is private investigations, we want to urge you to to start your own investigations, and um, maybe some of the tools uh, can help you um, w um, while doing this. Okay. So first of all, take a look at the stuff that we've done last year. I think many of this of the of the tools are actually quite helpful. Again, um, basically, you need the entire suit from sysinternals.com. You need the stuff from Foundstone, the, their forensic tools, and uh, obviously any port, uh, uh, um, uh, any uh, network sniffer is actually quite interesting or quite useful. Uh, at the real will do the job, of course. Um, if you want to really get into the stuff, you have to reverse engineer the stuff, which is, uh, in fact, quite uh, difficult. We have uh, given an example last year um, about this, and uh, what you can do is you can use a debugger like uh, Oli Debug or IDA Pro or uh, well, there are many others, but I think those two are the most important ones. What you can do is you can um, you can take a look you can take a look at uh, um, iDefense uh, malware analysis uh, pack. It's actually uh, it's a, it's a, it's a collection of software meant or for the pr or meant to be used for the purpose of, of analyzing malware, basically. And it's a, it's a very good piece of software written by those guys, and I think you should take a look at it. We have also two uh, a website that we can really recommend to you. It's uh, Norman Sandbox and uh, virustotal.com. And I think if we go on, um, we're gonna see a, a screenshot. Yes, this is actually virustotal.com. It's a very good website. And I just stumbled across uh, accidentally, actually. And it's excellent, because what, what it does, basically, is you submit a, you submit a file, and uh, it will scan the file, I think, in about, well, 20 or 25 virus scanners, okay, for you. And uh, you get the result after a while. So it's excellent, okay, I know this is, uh, screenshot is not quite readable, but basically what it does, what, uh, what it says is, I've uploaded the file money.exe, that was the file that was created by the exploit uh, of molecularmultimedia.com, which was, as we said, com compromised. And basically, he, he's gonna use F-Secure, he's gonna use Bitdefender, he's gonna use uh, Semantic Antivirus, he's gonna use uh, uh, Sophos, he's gonna use all the, those different uh, virus scanners to scan the file we send, and then he's gonna give you the result of the file, what it has actually detected. So uh, some of them actually could say, well, this is Trojan horse, X, uh, X, X and Y, um, this could be um, uh, sober.y or whatever it is. And basically, if, if uh, in my opinion, we had a case actually which we are currently investigating, which uh, in which most of the virus scanners did, did actually not find a virus in the file. So 
uh, when you have a malicious or you think you have a malicious file and many of those virus scanners are not picking it up, then you're, I think you have something interesting. And I didn't try because I just got the exploit uh, today, but uh, um, the WMF exploit that's currently spreading around the internet, I think it would be interesting to throw it in there and just to see what all those virus scanners say about it, okay? Okay, then the next thing we have, um, it's called sandbox.norman.no. Um, it's actually a very interesting um, project. And I, again, I just stumbled across somehow. Um, what it does basically, you give it a file and it will execute the file for you basically, okay? And we, it will record all the stuff the file has done and give you a nice kind of uh, report, okay? <coughs> sorry. <coughs> sorry, what you have is, <coughs> sorry. What you have is basically um, what we've seen before. Um, the money.exe will actually install two files. It will uh, install a new service and it will run as a backdoor on, on your system. And um, maybe those people that know Torsten Holtz, I, I just um, I spoke with him um, this morning, and uh, they have actually a, a diploma thesis which will uh, implement an op open source sandbox um, for malware an an analysis. This is actually quite cool. So that we will have in the future, probably next year at some stage, a software which you can use to automatically uh, create, uh, uh, analyze malware in a, a closed environment, okay? So we almost come to um, the end. Um, yeah, I think, or we both think that honey clients are actually very interesting uh, uh, type of research you can do. It will help us to, to understand the interrelation between malicious website, malicious code, and then gaining money from the internet. And um, we still have to find out uh, how long it takes for an exploit to be released, uh, let's say on chaotic or full disclosure or whatever, and then from being used. I think this WMF exploit we were just seeing the other day uh, is a good example for this. And uh, I think in my opinion, it, it usually takes less than a day um, but we still ha don't have certain fixed uh, 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 numbers about it. Okay, then I think uh, also um, Honey Clients could enable us to find undisclosed or new vulnerabilities. Uh, this is always uh, a goal, uh, an ultimate goal for us. Uh, good guys, obviously. Then uh, it can help you to explore the current threat situation because um, it will give you an overview of the, of the things that are actually currently happening. Um, you, what, what you can, um, what you can do as well, and, and I think, and I, that's why we're here, we ask the community to, to help us with this approach, um, because what we need is we need better, we need better software to actually an, uh, analyze malicious code, and also we need, uh, we need websites that actually contain malicious, uh, malicious links. So my, my idea is setting up a wiki or something, and just uh, basically, whenever somebody comes across a web, uh, uh, or knows about a, a malicious website, just put the website in the, w uh, in the wiki, and people can start analyzing it. So we, we get the list that Microsoft and other people actually have, like F-Secure, they have such a list as well, but they don't want to disclose. We have, we have a list of, uh, of some uh, malicious websites, but they keep changing and we need more of them. And the legal aspects, finally, I think are quite similar to those mentioned last year. Um, but, um, I mean, it's always a problem is, okay, let's say, okay, we had a big discussion last year and I, I don't want to start it all again, but um, b because we can do this later on in the bar if you want to, but um, I think the legal aspects are quite the same. If, if, you're, if you have a honey client that goes to a website, is being exploited, and then um, is used, let's say, in a botnet, then the question is, are you as a user reliable for this? Obviously, we are not your lawyers, and uh, well, some might blame Microsoft, some, like, some might blame the users, we still don't know, but this, some of the stuff you have to be aware of. And uh, yeah, I think, uh, yeah. Yeah, I just want to add that there is a very thin line. Uh, I would make a, the comparison like if you, if you lost a knife on the street, that's not a crime, but if you throw the knife into a, into a prison and there will, somebody will be killed by, the, by this knife, it's, it might be a crime. So that's a very thin line and this is not, uh, yeah. But if you, if you remember the, uh, the talk before, uh, yeah, maybe we should take the anarchistic approach and uh, yeah. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> okay. So, uh, so I think uh, yes, we have some we have some uh, time left, uh, not as last year, and we have we have some uh, time for, for questions. But before that, I want to point out to some uh, interesting links. If you want to go to the Microsoft website, they have some. I don't know why how they got it, but they have some interesting research papers. 
and uh, um, um, they won't give you the websites, which is kind of weird in my opinion, but they have interesting projects and interesting research there. A good project is actually the Chipo Petrol, which I came across, I think, two or three days ago, which will basically, it's, uh, they, will, they will try to make a list of typos. So F secure with a K and say, uh, instead of a C, for instance, or Google with three O's or something. And they will try to find websites that actually target users that, have ty that, that uh, did make typos and exploit them straight away. So maybe this is an interesting project as well. And last year we have given you many, many links to websites, so maybe you can take a look at this stuff as well. And uh, yeah, I think we've come to the end. And uh, thank you very much for your attention. The website is on ceftarget.org. The presentation will be available at some stage. Again, uh, I'm not very good in designing websites, uh, but the stuff will be there, also the stuff from last year and some exploitation stuff. Um, so thanks for listening, folks, and uh, yeah, we're looking forward to answering your questions now.